Hey, it's Soleil, and this is episode 222 of the Orange Pill Investor. And today I want to talk about MicroStrategy naturally, but I'm probably going to be all over the place with this. I was talking about being a little bit paranoid because so many people were bullish about the rate cut and, you know, number go up and we're going to get Godzilla candles and Bitcoin to MicroStrategy to the moon. But the market is irrational, but not only that, if I just take a look at Bitcoin, so it seems like there's two types of Bitcoiners right now. There's ones that are like waiting for the rate cut so that Bitcoin could go to the moon. And then the other ones are like Bitcoin, Bitcoin to 48 and then to the moon. And let's just take a look at that likelihood. So I don't really do technical analysis, but I can probably draw a support and a resistance line. And if I just go back to whatever the most recent uh, support lines are, that might serve as a resistance point. So we got 52, 51, 52. There's a lot of support for that because we set all time highs from there. But we also have this 46. So people, some people are calling for like 48 or whatever, which makes sense if this becomes the new support because it was old resistance. And I mean, this is trending poorly. So we had a 58K low, we had a 55K low, got a 54K low, we got another 54. So it does seem like Bitcoin's gonna shit or get off the pot. It's it's gonna go up or down, and and you know, it never just trends sideways forever. So, uh, I'm not ruling it out. But this 52 support here, you know, I don't know if 54 and 54 and 52 all count. But if we dropped materially below 52, I think it's easily, it, it could easily go to 46 or even, <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I don't know if we're ever going to see 30 again. Um, I think we would probably bounce pretty freaking hard off of 40. But nothing is promised. And Jeff Booth talks about volatility just going to continue to increase as the world kind of transfers into the new system. So we've had thousands upon thousands of years of decentralized money system where institutions uh, basically game the system so that they can siphon off all of the uh, fruits of our labor. Um, and we're trans transferring into a new system <clears throat> that's imposing the free market. And so it's going to be, you know, in the future, it's going to be people who deliver value to their you know, to humankind are going to be the ones that are rewarded with value. But we're still, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of volatility in between the uh, people that are, that are kind of pulling the puppet strings and, uh, and kind of losing a good bit of, of that control. So it wouldn't surprise me over the next decades, we, we continue to see a lot of this volatility so i have no idea if we're gonna get number go up or number go down but being that microstrategy is on a slight dip i want to go ahead and either i don't have a lot of buying power in this 5k account challenge so i'm gonna either buy a long call while it's cheap or sell another put credit spread. And so <clears throat> 380 call 
for 260. My average cost here is 326, so I could add one and dollar cost average it down a little bit. I like that Robinhood actually gives you charts for the option itself. It's pretty cool. This was as low as $2, 187. <clears throat> Yeah, so let's just, let's buy one of these. See if I can get it for the mid price. All right. And for the hell of it, let's just go ahead and try to sell a um, put credit spread in this account as well. You set up a put credit spread by going down and selling a put. That's going to give you a credit. And then to, to make sure that it stays a credit, you're going to buy a put, but it has to be the cheaper one. So you can't buy the 121. That would result in a debit spread. So go down to the 119. And if I'm using Keller Criterion and I want to assume that Delta is the percent chance that this could go below 120. It's about a 31% chance that that could happen. Is this 120, 121? Or 120, 119, I mean. Why? Okay, so the liquidity must be so bad on this it's about a dollar fifty that oh goodness that's hilarious so the um the liquidity is so bad that this was the 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 strike farther away from at the money was actually the mid price was was higher than the strike price and it seems like the um Either the market makers got their heads on straight, or maybe this is fine again now. But that was kind of freaking me out for a second. But if I wanted to look at this, I would need to, if this was made sense as far as Kelly is concerned, I would need to collect at least $30 for a $100 spread. And this is, you know, just barely kind of cutting it close. So this isn't the the best ticker to even trade spreads in because the volatility is poor, but I'm going to give it a shot. I don't expect this um, to fill. So I'm going to try 0.33. And so I'll probably have to walk this. No, well, actually it did fill. Okay. I might have sold myself a little short on that one, but um, maybe they're trying to make some deals before the market closes. It's 337. All right, so let me take a look at Oh, because it's worth 55. Yeah, the liquidity is pretty bad on this bad boy. All right, so I opened it for 33. So if I want to keep 50% of the profits, then I would try to close it for half of that. So let's just go 17. Good till closed. And submit. All right, depending if the price of MicroStrategy goes up or stays the same over time, then this will end up closing for... Uh, $17 return, putting up 100 in collateral. Um, and I wanted to do it today because Tuesdays are when you can get exactly 45 days to expiration. Right here. And I set one of these up on Tasty Trade, so I figured maybe I'll just go ahead and set one up on 
Robin Hood as well. Just to demonstrate. But Tuesdays are always the day that you can get exactly 45 days. And 45 days is the result of Tasty Trades research that says that for out of the money options, theta begins to accelerate maximally at 45 days and lasts for two to three weeks. So that should be the sweet spot for being able to get in and out of this trade and make a little bit of money and get your collateral back so you can make another trade. All right, was there anything that I wanted to talk about else? Um, I'll probably keep this one short, but have no idea what's gonna happen tomorrow. Have no idea what's gonna happen in the market based on what happens tomorrow. But uh, anything is possible, even even <laughs> some of the the paranoid 48K predictions, it's all on the table. But um, I probably won't start being more conservative on selling covered calls until closer to October. So I've still been selling at the money covered calls the last few weeks. And I may continue to just go ahead and do that until what I hope will be October. Oh, actually, that was the other thing that I guess I was going to show. Is I've got these. They were 180 day to expiration when I opened them. Uh, so for February. And I've got these Decembers. So how to decide which way to go. I'm going to put some STR here. Get price. This is optionsprofitcalculator.com. Select an option. Let's go with February 2025. All the way at the top. 250 bucks a pop. And the price on those is 250. So before I calculate, I'm going to try to make an apples to apples comparison. Like if I have a certain amount of money, should I buy the Februarys or should I buy the Decembers? Now the Februarys are going to be cheaper per Delta. You're going to be able to buy more Delta, but Theta is so much faster and the, the, the expiration date is so close that a move would have to be made very soon in order to make it worthwhile. So price per option is 16. Price per option on the other one is 250, right? So common denominator for here What if I make uh, five contracts? It's going to be eight grand. And let's see, 250. If I have eight grand to spend, and I, how many of these 250s can I get? So I should be able to get 40. Or let's see, eight five hundreds. So I should be able to get 16. Nope, oh, 32. My math ain't math. All right. Calculate. All right, so for the Februarys. We got to make money quick because if the current price, you know, if we stay at the current price, we're already losing money in just 
three weeks, four weeks, three weeks. So let's say by the end of the year, December 31st, MicroStrategy has to get to 225 just to, you know, 216 just to squeak out a little bit of profit here. And of course, my picture is covering the damn thing. But let's figure, okay, so by December 30th at 216, I can't get December 30th. All right, so December 17th. Let me go see if I can find December 17th. Okay, 18th. At 2.16. The Februarys would result in about a $5,000 profit. And the ninth December nineteenth would result in a twelve thousand dollar profit. Shit, I just closed it. So it's, they're both probably okay. It's just the price really has to move on these February calls. If we don't get, you know, and I would really prefer not to even be holding these. Let's see, one, two, three. I'd really want to unload these by like November 18th. I don't like holding any of these under 90 days. So I need... 170 180 by november and that's completely doable but the december ones you can just sit on those until august that's that's plenty of time um but in any case, I'll probably be win or lose, no matter what the value of these are, whether even if they're just break even, I will be rolling these at 90 days anyway. I'll probably be rolling these Februarys into the Decembers uh, if they're not profitable. If they are profitable, maybe I take some profits and, and roll some out. Uh, but the trade-offs between these two is the short-dated ones, you can get cheaper, you can get more delta, but the value is going to collapse much faster. And if the price of MicroStrategy crashes, they will also collapse much faster. And then these longer-dated ones are going to give you more time to win, and they're also going to resist decay because theta is going to be much smaller but they will be a little bit more expensive per delta so you won't be able to buy as much delta with the same price out to december um all right uh use options profit calculator.com to um to inform your decisions not financial advice, but I think I will be going to continue to sell cover calls, at least for the next couple of weeks, continue to load up on long positions. And then for the start of October, I may continue or I may start just leaving more and more shares uncovered until I see a spike. Because if MicroStrategy is going to go to $500 or $1,000 a share over the next year, 
it's got several doublings that need to happen. And it, I don't think it's going to happen all in one day. But just like we got this double from 75 to 150 to 200, we're going to need several of those doublings and pullbacks to get to where, where I think MicroStrategy is headed. So I want to start capturing all of this upside and then somewhere up in here, doesn't have to be the tippy top, but somewhere at the top, start getting aggressive with the covered calls. Instead of selling covered calls here and missing out on, a you know, half or more of this upside, I want to start getting a little bit more strategic with it. So selling covered calls up here. And then kind of just, I guess, bag holding down here and uh, waiting for some spikes, sell covered calls here, do nothing or accumulate shares and positions here. All right. That's it for now. Be good, y'all.